actually several next steps. One way in which I could go would be, uh, you won't believe but I can give more than four lectures and <laughs> exhaust everybody. So one way could have been going into the SU4 direction, the Patti Salam uh, direction, but uh, since there is some interest in the audience for Lawrence kind of things, I will uh, try instead to discuss the issue of Lawrence versus Euclidean, and I will review some of my work. Um, now, um, there has been some early attempts, I have references at the end as usual, by Paschke and um, the name escapes me, Runner Beck, uh, to, uh, to, to do some covariant approach to quantum field theory so that um, can try to do this uh, kind of things into it, but it doesn't uh, really work. Now, uh, one attempt is crying spaces. I will not talk much about it, but uh, um, uh, I will say something now and at the end. There is a very good Excel review on diseases of Nadir Bizi, who just um, graduated in September. I was a reporter of his thesis, so he had it. The thesis is public because it's finished in general it's public, but it's not on the archive or something. If you want, I'm sure that I can uh, write to him, but actually I decided that to write to him and ask him to put it on the archive. I don't know if he wants to do something with it, but in general, at least in our institution, if the thesis is discussed, it's available in some repository in the Sorbonne. So I can uh, circulate. So what is a crying space? And uh, see, when you want to do a Lorentzian Hilbert space, it means that your vectors have an inner product, a scalar product that can be positive, negative, or zero, because now uh, this is not an Hilbert space. Well, we need Hilbert spaces. And uh, but uh, one can write this kind of space as split, starting with an Hilbert space, and you split into two subspaces. Each of them has a positive definite Hilbert product. But you take a crime product to, to be the difference between the two. So you take, take because his space, no? there are, it's uh, slices of positive space, and then there is time, which is negative. So you, you sum the two, at the you multiply at the level of the algebra, so you sum them at the level of the Hilbert space. And, uh, uh, but then you need to have some fundamental symmetry which, uh, which connects the two states. Okay, so you have, which is basically, something which rotates the space, rotates the time into space and vice versa. So that's what, what you want. And uh, there are uh, uh, efforts by BZ and other people, which I will mention at the end, they are trying to do this for the spectral triple and the spectral action. And uh, uh, I will, uh, I will, uh, say something now. The construction has a very interesting result for an older version of the model because at the, before the spectral action, spectral action I think is 97, and in 97 the action was the connection to form that you can build out of the algebra and the Dirac operator. And uh, there were calculations that could be done, as I, I told you the, uh, the anecdote of Kohn uh, going to CERN, it was with this older thing. So you write down the action, and the action is the action of the standard model, um, more or less. However, the, uh, you have relations with the coefficients, but it's, uh, you, you, you write a classical action, but you, can, you don't know what are the boundary conditions for the renormalization flow. So you, there are relations, but you don't know at which scale of the coupling constants you are writing this. And the coupling constants don't come equal, so, so it's not clear what it is, and it's not made for uh, running of the coupling constants. And another problem in, is that you don't get the gravitational part. 
The gravitational part is not a curvature to four. The Einstein Hilbert action is not a curvature to four. It's, if anything, a residue, so it's a different thing. So this was abandoned uh, and uh, it started uh, the, the spectral action. But DZ and his advisor, Browder and Bernard, Bernard, uh, they uh, are able to make it work in a Minkowskian way, Lorentzian way, uh, the old version. And now here there is another interesting thing. In fact, I hope that DZ publishes it. Most of the calculations really leading to the spectral action, it's this older model with everything, were done by a German uh, at the time uh, student. Um, called Karen Lentner, that uh, did a thesis in which uh, she had all the details of the calculation, a diploma thesis. And uh, then there was a very short paper in a proceedings with her advisor with not giving all the details. I had seen this uh, thesis, but then I don't know what had happened. Probably I had a paper version. Then this lady uh, left physics. And uh, the advisor, I don't saw what happened. Anyways, this. Uh, Thing was very, very was lost. This paper, this diploma thesis, because they were not given. And then Christian Brother sat down and called all of the people called Elsner in the in the city which she was, and she ma he managed to find it with some police work. And this thesis was fine, but it's still they have a paper version. And uh, so now I want to write to BZ telling you that don't do Karen Elsner number two. That we don't. Uh, no, this is a PhD thesis, so it's more. Uh, anyways, another alternative, and we were discussing this uh, among ourselves some time uh, now at lunch, is uh, consider a causal structure. Now, uh, if you have a, the states and you have a partial order, say which one is coming to the other one, so you reconstruct basically the light cone. So you have points in the future, points in the, I say points, so states in the future, states in the past, and uh, contemporary. Uh, and so one can try to reproduce this uh, at the level of the algebra, uh, but and this can be more or less done. Uh, Nicolas Franco and uh, Michael Eckstein uh, worked on this. However, again, they don't manage to write the spectral action. So what I will do is to do what people do when they have a Euclidean theory, which is to weak rotate. OK, so in general, the Euclidean actions are used by physicists very often. Um, Toft used it for the normalization. So what one does is uh, one does a weak theory. And the procedure is to change the signature of the field theory. If it consists, uh, loosely speaking, it's not really correct, and I will be more uh, uh, less uh, less loosely speaking uh, in the, uh, in a little while. You rotate the time derivative in the complex plane, or if you want, you take a, uh, um, a analytic continuation and you go on the axis or anywhere in the upper plane, and uh, this changes the signature of space time from Lorentzian metric to the Euclidean one. <coughs> this means that when you have an integral, a divergent integral, like e to the i t, this becomes e to the minus t. Now, this is divergent. It gives you an infinity when you try to integrate this. This is convergent. So in the action, where the t appears in the measure for the action, then you get a, a different sign. And uh, the action becomes convergent, and you can do calculations. So it's a way to render convergent uh, the, the otherwise divergent integral. So it's divergent on the real line. You go in the upper plane. Simplest thing is to go the imaginary <coughs> axis, because then you just change the sign. And then uh, you do your path integration. So you sum over all configurations. You find the result. And then, um, and then you you weak rotate back. Of course, what I'm saying is not that doing the path integral also in this 
rotated space is completely trivial, however, uh, it works fairly well. There are other possible regularizations. Sometimes one puts a mass to massless particles, a fictitious mass, and then sends this mass to zero. Or one puts a cutoff, says, no, OK, I don't care. I don't, the integral don't go to infinity. They go to up to a certain level, and then I put the integral at infinity. It, it is always said that uh, those procedures are equivalent. Uh, actually, sometimes they are not. But uh, uh, usually, uh, they are. But the, the technical difficulties may be very different. So uh, one chooses the regula regulator that is most convenient according to the thing. Then what, what one says is why well, I rotate back. So I have an infinity. I weak rotate. I rotate back. So one undoes the operation, goes back with arrow in the other way. And now we have a problem, because in the spectral action, we started Euclidean. In physics, one starts Minkowskian, Wright or Lorenz. I use Lorenzian and Minkowskian as, uh, uh, as synonymous. Um, so one starts in uh, Peshkin Schrader in the, the books. One starts with the uh, Lorenzia signature in Minkowski space, then rotates, does what he has to do, and then rotates back. So he knew what he had rotated. He knew uh, what he had expanded. So he knows where the real line is. But now instead we started. In the, uh, in the imaginary in the imaginary axis and then so we have to rotate back now you can imagine a lot of uh, ways in which things can go wrong because if you have rotation you have to rotate on the other side or or something so we're going into uncharted ter territory but one can one knows what are sensible results so one can do things that, that uh, OK, so what I say, the weak rotation is indicated by transformation t, which goes to y t. But this is not a very correct procedure if you are in a curved space. Now, there are um, examples uh, like the sitter spaces. Uh, see, if you are in uh, uh, not particularly weird spaces, but time in uh, relativity is not an absolute concept. So what? The axis of time for me is not the same as the one of observer which is moving. In uh, Minkowski space, it's just a uh, rotation, uh, hyperbolic rotation. But uh, in uh, the funny spaces, the definition of time can be very ambiguous. And uh, this rotation here may be ill defined. So if one wants to do things in the correct way, one has some functional, which will be a functional of the curved space time. And a good way is to consider the Fierbeins. And then one makes a rotation of the Fierbein. So what's a Fierbein? Uh, tetrad. tetrad. Uh, uh, OK, I will. Uh, uh, if, you have, um, um, if you have a curved, a curved space, Sorry. OK, you can consider so you have a card spaces. So at each point here, it's a spin bundle. So you have the, some uh, gamma mu's. Okay, and this gamma mu have the information to about the metric. Okay, this GPU nu now is the metric tensor. Okay. Okay, but I can always go to the tangent space. So at each point here, I have a tangent space. The tangent space is flat. Okay, so I have the gamma functions on the flat space, which will have a, a similar twice. And now here I have eta AD, where eta is is uh, minus one, 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 one. Sorry, plus one, minus, minus, minus. So this is, this is the flat one. The a, eta is the flat metric. And G will be a complicated metric. Now, 
how do I go from one to the other? So E A mu are the tensors which move you from the ta locally, from the tangent space to the real space. So there are things like E A mu, E A nu equals G mu nu, where I raise and lower uh, A, A are flat indices, and mu are curved indices. So A are on the tangent space, and mu are on this one. Uh, or I have other relations like A mu A, A mu B equals uh, eta A B, and uh, okay, so, so on and so forth. So, 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 do you mean uh, uh, so uh, so the orthonormal basis of the of the inter, uh, of the intelligent space? Yes. Okay. Okay. Which con which however? Can you oh, can oh. you me? Yes. At each point of the you like a frame, not the same frame. Yes. Which is not. Which is that you write from the tangent space to that not the same frame. Yes. What you call a soldering form. Okay. So the mapping from the tangent space to that frame. So you have fixed. So you have a bundle of frames. So that soldering form you coordinate with what you call EUA. At this point, you, you have so a choose a uh, basis of form, okay, like uh -huh. and in the target yeah, uh, fixed frame, you will choose a orthonormal, not orthonormal, the eta a b matrix, okay, not the same matrix, and you solder one to the other. So it is this thing that take one differential form and goes yeah. to the other. This is a different form on the base, mm -hmm. and this is a different form on the fiber on the frame, okay, and this one moves from one to the other, okay, tells you, moves you from one to one to the other, and uh, you, you get all these formulas, all these formulas here, so another important one is E mu A gamma mu equals gamma A, where those are the, 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 the flat one and those are the curved one. So you go constantly from uh, the curved indices, uh, which are on the basis, to the bundle of frames, which are flat at each point. Okay, but that, so they, this will give you also the parallel transport, everything. But I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't teach a class in differential geometry of Rivas. No, several of the questions you ask were part of classes which I taught in my career. So I, 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 I not only I know, but I know how to tell this, this one sometimes so about who has been teaching. So, so it's their point, points of view. But this, e, this uh, are the way which you go from flat to curved. OK, and, they, are, and they, they, call, they have all the information you need. Because at each point, I can go back and forth, between, but the flat ones are much better for <coughs> calculations. And uh, so this is a weak rotation. And the inverse, which I call weak star, is basically uh, you start with this, uh, this Euclidean, and then you go back, like multiply time minus i. I, I times minus i is 1, and then everything is uh, OK. Now, for the bosonic part of the action, things go relatively without problems. The prescription is clear, and the action is rotated in a new one, which makes the partition function con convergent. So you start with a, a bosonic action, which depends on some fields and some Euclidean metric. Then you rotate by changing the metric, but the metric is uh, connected. Where is it? Is it here? E A mu, I see this one. Okay, so the metric is a function itself of the turbines. So you write something with the Euclidean metric. You make, you, you do something, uh, you do this rotation which gives you with a Euclidean bosonic action with the minus the metric, because that's what you do. There are two turbines in zero. And then this is minus I, the, um, the Minkowskian one, and since this one appears with an i, you get a minus one, and then you, you, 
you make things converge and you go back and forth. So this is fairly well defined. The fermionic sector requires some extra considerations. Why? Because the group spin 1, 3, which is the covering of SL2C, which is the symmetry of relativity, is different from spin 4. So gamma matrices, generators, charge conjugations, charge, this is not change, charge, uh, they, are, uh, they are different, as I will say some of the difference. And they all boil down to the difference between these two groups. Okay, this is non-compact and this is compact. So the Lie algebra, now, uh, there has been some early attempts, I have references at the end as usual, by Aschke and, um, the name escapes me, Runner, Beth, uh, to, uh, to, to do some covariant approach to quantum field theory so that um, can try to do this uh, kind of things into it, but it doesn't uh, really work. Now, uh, one attempt is crying spaces. I will not talk much about it, but uh, um, uh, I will say something now and at the end. There is a very good Excel review on the thesis of Nadir Bizi, who just uh, graduated in September. I was a reporter of his thesis, so he had it. The thesis is public because it's finished in general as public, but it's not on the archive or something. If you want, I'm sure that I can uh, write to him. But actually, I decided that to write to him and ask him to put it on the archive. I don't know if he wants to do something with it. But in general, at least in our institution, if the thesis is discussed, it's available in some repository in the Sorbonne. So I can uh, circulate. So what is a crying space? And uh, see, when you want to do a Lorentzian Hilbert space, it means that your vectors have an inner product, a scalar product, that can be positive, negative, or zero. Because Now, uh, this is not an Hilbert space. Well, we need Hilbert spaces. And, uh, but uh, one can write this kind of space as split, starting with an Hilbert space, and you split into two subspaces. Each of them has a positive definite Hilbert product, but you take a crime product to, to be the difference between the two. So you take, take Minkowski space. No? There are it's, uh, slices of positive space, and then there is time, which is negative. So you, you sum the two, at the you multiply at the level of the algebra, so you sum them at the level of the Hilbert space. and. Uh, uh, but then you need to have some fundamental symmetry which, uh, which connects the two states. Okay, so you have, which is basically something which rotates the space, rotates the time into space and vice versa. So that's what, what you want. And uh, there are uh, uh, efforts by BZ and other people, which I will mention at the end, they are trying to do this for the spectral triple and the spectral action. And uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will say something now. The construction has very interesting result for an older version of the model, because at the, before the spectral action, spectral action I think is 97, and in 97, the action was the connection to form that you can build out of the algebra and the Dirac operator. And uh, there were calculations that could be done, as uh, I told you the, uh, the anecdote of Kohn uh, mm, going to CERN. It was with this older thing. So you write down the action, and the action is the action of the standard model, um, more or less. However, the, uh, you have relations with the coefficients, but it's, uh, you, you, you write a classical action, but uh, you can you don't know what are the boundary conditions for the renormalization flow. So, you, so you, there are relations, but you don't know at which scale of the coupling constants you are writing this. And the coupling constants don't come equal, so, so it's not clear what it is, and it's not made for uh, running of the coupling constants. 
And another problem in, is that you don't get the gravitational part. The gravitational part is not a curvature to fall. The Einstein Hilbert action is not a curvature to fall. It's, if anything, a residue. So it's a different thing. So this was abandoned. Uh, and uh, it started the, 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 um, the spectral action. But BZ and his advisor, Browder and Bernard, Bernard, uh, they uh, are able to make it work in a Minkowskian way, Lorentzian way, uh, the old version. And now here there is another interesting thing. In fact, I hope that BZ publishes it. Most of the calculations really leading to the spectral action, it's this older model with everything, were done by a German uh, at the time uh, student um, called Karel Entner that did a thesis in which the, she had all the details of the calculation, a diploma thesis. And uh, then there was a very short paper in a proceedings with her advisor with not giving all the details. I had seen this uh, thesis, but then I don't know what would have happened. Probably I had a paper version. Then this lady uh, left physics. And uh, the advisor, I don't saw what happened. Anyways, this uh, thing was very, very, was lost, this, paper, this diploma thesis, because they were not here. And then Christian Brother sat down and called all of the people called Elsner in the, build, in the city which she was. And she ma he managed to find it with some police work. And this thesis was fine. But still, they have a paper version. And uh, so now I want to write to BZ telling you, don't do Karen Elsner number two. That we don't. Uh, no, this is a PhD thesis, so it's more. Uh, Anyways, another alternative, and we were discussing this uh, among ourselves some time at, uh, now at lunch, is uh, consider a causal structure. Now, uh, if you have a, the states and you have a partial order, say which one is coming to the other one, so you reconstruct basically the light cone. So you have points in the future, points in the, I say points, so states in the future, states in the past, and uh, contemporary. Uh, and so one can try to reproduce this uh, here, the level of the algebra. Uh, but and this can be more or less done. Uh, Nicolas Franco and uh, Michael Eckstein uh, worked on this. However, again, they don't manage to write the spectral action. So what I will do is to do what people do when they have a Euclidean theory which is to weak rotate. OK, so in general, Euclidean actions are used by physicists very often. Um, Toft used it for the normalization. So what one does is uh, one does a weak theory. And the procedure is to change the signature of the field theory. If it consists, uh, loosely speaking, it's not really correct, and there will be more uh, less, uh, less loosely speaking, uh, in, uh, in a little while, you rotate the time derivative in the complex plane. Or if you want, you take a, uh, um, a analytic continuation and you go on the axis or anywhere in the upper plane. And uh, this changes the signature of space time from Lorentzian metric to the Euclidean one. <coughs> This means that when you have an integral, a divergent integral, like e to the i t, this becomes e to the minus t. Now, this is divergent. It will give you an infinity when you try to integrate this. This is convergent. So in the action, where the t appears in the measure for the action, then you get a, a different sign. And uh, the action becomes convergent. And you can do calculations. So it's a way to render convergent uh, the, the otherwise divergent integral. So it's divergent on the real line. You go in the upper plane. Simplest thing is to go the imaginary <coughs> axis, because then you just change the sign. And then uh, you do your path integration. So you sum over all configurations. You find the result. And then uh, um, and then you, you weak rotate back. 
of course, what I'm saying is not that doing the path integral also in this uh, rotated space is completely trivial, or whether uh, it works fairly well. There are other possible regularizations. Sometimes one puts a mass to massless particles, a fictitious mass, and then sends this mass to zero. Or one puts a cutoff, says, no, OK, I don't care. I don't, the integral don't go to infinity. They go all to up to a certain level, and then I put the integral at infinity. It, it is always say that uh, those procedures are equivalent. Uh, actually, sometimes they are not. But uh, uh, usually, uh, they are. But the, the technical difficulties may be very different. So uh, one chooses the regula regulator that is most convenient according to the thing. Then what, what one says is why I rotate back. So I have an infinity, I rotate, I rotate back. So one undoes the operation, goes back with arrow in the other way. But now we have a problem, because in the spectral action, we started Euclidean. In physics, one starts Minkowskian, Wright or Lorenz. I use Lorenzian and Minkowskian as, uh, uh, as synonymous. Um, so one starts in uh, Peshkin Schrader in the, the books. One starts with uh, Lorenzo signature in Minkowski space, then rotates, does what he has to do, and then rotates back. So he knew what he had rotated. He knew uh, what he had expanded. So he knows where the real line is. But now he said that we started. In the, uh, in the imaginary in the imaginary axis and then so we have to rotate back now you can imagine a lot of uh, ways in which things can go wrong because if you have rotation you have to rotate on the other side or or something so we're going into uncharted ter territory but one can one knows what are sensible results so one can do things that, that uh, Okay, so what I say, the big rotation is indicated by transformation T, which goes to YT. But this is not a very correct procedure if you are in a curved space. Now, there are um, examples uh, like the sitter spaces. Uh, see, if you are in uh, uh, not particularly weird spaces, but time in uh, relativity is not an absolute concept. So what? The axis of time for me is not the same as the one of observer which is moving. In uh, Minkowski space, it's just a uh, rotation, uh, hyperbolic rotation. But uh, in uh, the funny spaces, the definition of time can be very ambiguous. And uh, this rotation here may be ill defined. So if one wants to do things in the correct way, one has some functional, which will be a functional of the curved space time. And a good way is to consider the Fierbeins. And then one makes a rotation of the Fierbein. So what's a Fierbein? Uh, tetrad. Uh, uh, OK, I will. Uh, if, you have, um, um, if you have a curved, a curved space, OK, you can consider <coughs> so you have a curved spaces. So at each point here, it's a spin bundle. So you have uh, some uh, gamma mu's. Okay, and this gamma mu have the information to about the metric. Okay, this GPU nu now is the metric tensor. Okay. Okay, but I can always go to the tangent space. So at each point here, I have a tangent space. The tangent space is flat. Okay, so I have the gamma functions on the flat space, which will have a, a similar twice. And now here I have eta a b, where eta is is uh, minus one, 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 one. Sorry, plus one, minus, minus, minus. So this is, this is the flat one. The A eta is the flat metric. 
and G will be a complicated thing. Uh -huh. Now, how do I go from one to the other? So E, A, mu are the tensors which move you from the locally from the tangent space to the real space. So there are things like E, A, mu, E, A, mu equals uh, G mu nu, where I raise and lower uh, A, A are flat indices, and mu are curved indices. So A are on the tangent space, and mu are on this one. Uh, or I have other relations like A mu A, A mu B equals uh, eta A B, and uh, okay, so, so on and so, so forth. So, so, do you mean uh, uh, so uh, so the orthonormal basis of the of the inter, uh, of the intelligent space? Yes. Okay. Okay. Which con which however? Can I, can oh, oh. Yes. At each point of the, 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 the yeah. Yeah. you like a frame. Uh, you don't see the same frame. Yes. Okay. Uh, which is then the you write from the tangent space yeah. so that you don't see the same frame. You yes. What you call the soldering form. Okay. So the mapping from the tangent space yeah. to that frame. Okay. So you have fixed. So you have a yeah. bundle of frames. Mm -hmm. So that uh, soldering form you coordinate with what you call EUA. At each point you have so you choose a uh, basis of form, okay. the next menu, uh -huh. and in the target yeah, uh, fixed so. frame you will choose a autonomous, not autonomous, the eta a b matrix. Okay. Not the same matrix, and you solder one to the other. So it is, this thing is, uh, say, one differential form and goes yes. to the other. This is a different form on the base, mm -hmm. and this is a different form on the fiber, on the frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this one moves from one to the other. Okay, tells you, moves you from one to one to the other. And uh, you, you get all this formula. <laughs> All these formulas here. So another important one is E mu A gamma mu equals gamma A, where those are the the the, the flat one and those are the curved one. So you go constantly from uh, the curved indices, uh, which are on the basis, to the bundle of frames, which are flat at each point. Okay, but that, so they, this will give you also the parallel transport every day. But I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't teach a class in differential geometry of Riemann. No, several of the questions you ask were part of classes which I taught in my career. So I, 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 I not only I know, but I know how to tell this this ones that I so Balfour has been teaching. So so it's their point points of view, but. This e, this uh, are the way in which you go from flat to curved, okay? And they are, and they they, can, they have all the information you need, because at each point I can go back and forth between. But the flat ones are much better for <coughs> calculations, and uh, so this is a weak rotation, and the inverse, which I call weak star, is basically uh, you start with this. Uh, this Euclidean, and then you go back, like multiply I minus I, I, I times minus I is one, and then everything is okay. Now, for the bosonic part of the action, things go relatively without problems. The prescription is clear, and the action is rotated in a new one, which makes the partition function convergent. So you start with a, a bosonic action, which depends on some fields and some Euclidean metric. Then you rotate by changing the metric, but the metric is uh, connected. Where is it? Is it here? E A mu. I hear this one. Okay. So the metric is a function itself of the turbines. So you write something with the Euclidean metric. You make you you do something. Uh, you do this rotation, which gives you with a Euclidean bosonic action with the minus the metric, because that's what you do. There are two fear binds C zero, and then this is minus I the um, the Minkowskian one, 
and since this one appears with an i, you get a minus one, and then you, you, you make things convergent. And you go back and forth. So this is fairly well defined. The fermionic sector requires some extra considerations. Why? Because the group spin 1, 3, which is the covering of SL2C, which is the symmetry of relativity, is different from spin 4. So gamma matrices, generators, charge conjugation, charge, this is not change, charge, uh, they, are, uh, they are different. And I will tell you some of the difference. So in the end, you get the same action. So that thermionic uh, action is in any case contracting the conjugate spinner with an operator acting on a spinner. And now let's look at the charge conjugation. Now. I, I am sorry, but there is no other way of doing this than to insert some uh, indices. And you have to, uh, this is not a typo, unless there are typos, but this L is different from this L. So I start with the spinors, okay? And they have two different chirality, left and right, and this is a script left and script right. And uh, remember, for my convention, anti a left, the antiparticle of a left particle is right, so in charge conjugation. At the same time, the internal space has a similar decomposition given by the internal grading. And let me do more. Uh, so this is the spinors, and this is the internal space, which has left and right, and the conjugate left and conjugate right spinors, and they are given by this other grading. Now, if you remember, there was a quadruplication of states, because I had all of the states, and then I was tensor multiplying by the, um, all the states in the, part, in, the, in the zoo of particles. So in general, one projects out the bad spaces. So this H plus is only when the left part coincides with the right part. So it's left internal and left space time, right internal and right space time. When I take a particle, this is actually a right handed object which goes with right, and this is a left handed object which goes by right. And this can be obtained with a projector operator. So, and the projector operator is the internal, um, is uh, one plus uh, gamma. Gamma is the ca total chirality, it's gamma five times gamma internal. And this is a projection operator because gamma, gamma squared is one. I need two, two projectors, p plus and p minus. So, so, so this is on the on the uh, on the tensor product. On the tensor product. So on the big uh, on the big on the big uh, on the big space, the the, the, the the total space. So I throw away all the, the bad guys, the, the guys that uh, the schizophrenic states, the one which are left in, internally left but the, the transgender. Yeah, yeah. Internally they feel like, but externally they are something else. They are projected out with all due respect. So but, uh, uh, C, huh? C, what is it? C means antiparticle, conjugate. So HLC is the antiparticles okay. of the left-handed, yeah. which are right-handed. And they, they are okay. The other ones are not. Okay? The, 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 if, if there is an R here and an R here, they would be internally left-handed and externally right-handed, and they, I project them out. So okay. uh, you define antiparticles and particles uh, with respect to the manifold that is yes. L and R. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is a projector. This projector, out of this quadruplication, takes away half of the states. So I'm left with a duplication. The fermionic action is then defined in this way, as I say, where the, this psi belongs to H plus. J, this uh, Tomita, the generalization of Tomita Takesaki, is this Euclidean conjugation times an internal, um, an internal uh, matrix, which you see, it changes particle with antiparticles, really. So it's again a, a particular inversion matrix times complex conjugation because it's an anti-unitary operator. Now this action uses correctly the Fafian 
the fafian is a functional integral over fermions, over fermionic Grassmannian variables. So, so this, the action here, uh, the integration is, uh, is a Fafian determinant. Um, and, uh, um, and so for the, so, so this was when Kohn came and said I solved the, the fermion doubling problem because if we cast it to a Fafian expression. The, but we are already had uh, the, the projection, actually. This was already there. Um, but uh, there is a problem because it's true that we do the, the, uh, the um, integration, the, um, the path integral integration. However, you also need a unique way to recognize incoming states in scattering. So you should know what your particles are. So if you have a, I had a quadruplication, I threw away two. So I still have two of them. And I should have a unique incoming states. Because I, if, I do, if I do partition function, it doesn't matter. It's a functional integral. But sometimes in physics, I should know what is coming. The, in the Fox a state, which has Fox space, which is in Kami. So I still have a duplication. Uh, and moreover, in the sonic spectral action, I used the operator D, not the operator D projected. So in the spectral action, I need everything. Otherwise, I don't have the right trace. Uh, and moreover, this is. Uh, um, moreover, in the Euclidean, I probably didn't say, but in the Euclidean case, psi dagger and, uh, uh, well, I say two words. In the Euclidean case, psi dagger and psi are independent states. They are not, they are, they are independent, like z bar and z. So they, they are not obtainable in the path integration. They are independent. They, 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 so there is a duplication of degrees of freedom. And this is due to the Euclidianization. Now, I, uh, uh, there is, this is a comment. Now, the fact that there is a duplication of extra degrees of freedom appears in Euclidean quantum field theory. And uh, this is due to Osterwald and Schroeder. Uh, not the Hermitian, because the Dirac operator is not the square root of the lambda. In, in, in the Minkowski's case. In the Minkowski's case. Yes, it will, yes. So, Get to the end, and I will also. Because, uh, I say, you, for the moment, the answer which I give you is uh, yes, but I told you that you do the calculations until you get to the action in Euclidean. So in the Euclidean, is OK. Then once I get to the action, so I do the heat kernel, at this point, at the end, I do the rotation. OK? So everything which happened before is Euclidean. Now, doubling. Um, now, the doubling is uh, appeared for the first time uh, with the work of Osterbarden and Schroeder, uh, uh, 70s, not 60s. Uh, they construction is rendered in an axiomatic matter directly introducing the Euclidean quantum Fox space and operated uh, in one it. So they built a Euclidean Fox space, starting from scratch. Now, uh, the point is that in their construction, the fermionic Fox space is not a subspace of, of their Fox space. They, are, they have a different Fox space. For us, instead, we do have the right states. They are somewhere there. But we have twice. Uh, we have them twice, so it's not exactly the same thing. Uh, and uh, um, for them, uh, so so they have a mismatch <coughs> of number of degrees of, of freedom for each value of the spatial momentum, because k zero can have two signs basically, and. Uh, uh, so the only connection between Lorentzian and Euclidean lies in the opportunity to obtain the Lorentzian Green's function via analytic continuation of the matrix elements. So they do something like we do. So they do everything Euclidean. Then at the end, they get to the Green's function. They say, ah, now I analytically continue. 
the Greek structure. So no, so they, they, but they start Euclidean, the Euclidean quantum field theory. That's what they wanted to do. The uh, spectral action deals with the space of classical Euclidean fields, so it's not the Fox space. On the other hand, for each value of k of the spatial momentum, Lorentzian Fermi theory exhibits four one-particle states. So we have a quadruplication. On one hand, we. On the other hand, as a rather shaded construction, there are infinitely many more states because there is one for each value of k. So, so it's for, from our point of view, it's like there is an infinity of space. So clearly, the two things are connected. Okay. So I'm not saying that we discovered uh, Dublin. However, technically, they appear in a rather different ways. So uh, I put this because every time I talk of these things, say, but is this the other rather Schrader Dublin? And uh, it, yes and not, because I mean a slightly different context, but of, and lots of other uh, uh, Euclidianization of path integrals, including the one in supersymmetry, they always get this doubling of degrees of freedom. And in the end, it has to do clearly with the fact that I have spin 3, 1, mm -hmm. and SO3, 1, and uh, SO4 are different groups, and their coverings are different. So. There is some profound uh, deep down things. OK, now the extra degrees of freedom, let me get back to our framework, are taken care by the weak rotation. In fact, it's necessary to first perform the weak rotation in order to eliminate the charge conjugation doubling. So first, you have to identify these two doublings. Because if I try to remove it too early, J would break the spin force symmetry. So I have this, uh, this uh, picture in which I have the combination of weak rotation and the identification of states the identified below. So only if I do this identification and the projection afterward, this renders the action viable for physical application and free of fermion doublings. So now this is a very nice thing. Uh, especially if you are the one that did the Fermion doubling. Uh, this quadruplication is actually, if you didn't take the quadruplication, your weak rotation will not, will not come right. So you need this extra degrees because when you do weak rotate, you identify the spaces. And I will be some uh, some little details more. The paper with uh, with um, this is a paper with uh, Frances Francesco D'Andrea and uh, Max Kurkov. So the fact that there is a Russian means that there is a quantum field theory. The fact that there is a mathematician means that uh, uh, the mathematics is sound. And I provided for the typos and everything else. Uh, so you do the big rotation. So you start with the Euclidean F with spinors and this sort of, uh, of, uh, of uh, fear binds. You do the changing the Euclidean into Minkowski, but then you still have the doubled, the doubled states because this one had uh, antiparticles independent from particles. We know we have a Lorentz invariant thermodynamic action, which is invariant at the right group, but still has a doubling. The, spi the spinors are in H plus, which is not anymore a Hilbert space with respect to spin one three, by the way, because it was an Hilbert space in the right thing. But if I throw away half of it, it's not an Hilbert space because it doesn't have an S, a spin one three invariant inner product because I made this projection. The remaining doubling consists in the presence of spinors from all four <coughs> subspaces. So I have this one. They are the good ones.